So uh, I was li sitting here listening to these very interesting talks, and I just realized I have to warn people. There is a PowerPoint coming your way now, uh, so I think I give you some heads up. Um, Henrik Taylor is my name, and I'm going to talk about uh, risks to critical infrastructure and technical systems. Now, uh, I guess the first question I should start with, what does that mean? What does critical infrastructure and technical system mean in the context of risk and disasters? Well, I guess we all have an intuitive feeling of what a technical system is, right? But what is a critical infrastructure, really? Well, a rough definition is system and assets that are essential for the functioning of a society. Now, that might not clarify things a lot, so I'm going to use a simple example to illustrate it a little bit more clearly. It's a personal example. Um, it's, it's a normal day in my life, actually. Uh, and uh, a normal day in my life starts up with this, coffee. I wake up in the morning and turn on my coffee machine, and I bring the coffee in a thermos flask down to my train station. Since I live in Kungsbacka, which is quite far from here, I have to commute for a while, and eventually I arrive in Lund, I take the bus up to LTH where I work, go into my office, and turn on my computer. Send a lot of emails and do a lot of other stuff, and then I do this in the reverse in the evening. So, <clears throat> in order for me to do all this, I am dependent on a number of critical infrastructures. Uh, for example, Coffee. I need water to brew my coffee. And in Kungsbacka, where I live, um, there are roughly 60,000 people dependent on water, and we drink a lot of water every day. Um, and in order for us to have the water in the tap, of course, we need, need a lot of pipes. In Kungsbacka, roughly 700 kilometers of pipes. But there are other things as well. We need 18 pressure pump station, we need a water tower, and of course, a lot more. We need people operating these systems. And this, I think, is a general characteristic of these critical infrastructure. You only see parts of them. You only see the tap when you turn it. Or, like the other ones, you only see the trains. You don't really see what's going on behind the scenes of these infrastructures. And if you look at the development of them, like transportation system, communication system, you'll see that many of them started out as local systems, small local system, perhaps within a city or between a few cities. And now they have grown into bigger and bigger and bigger systems. Sometimes this system, of course, spans entire nations, sometimes between nations. What is even more important from a risk management perspective is that they are also growing interconnected. So they are growing together into system of systems. From a risk management perspective, that's a challenge because no longer is it clear where one system starts and the other one ends. And that poses challenges. Now, increased interconnectedness, you could ask, well, isn't that good? because it gives rise to a lot of new services and if more efficient services. So surely that is good. And yes, what's the problem? I like watching on-demand movies, and I pay my bills over the internet, so that's all good. And yes, that is true. But there is a flip side to this. And the flip side is what Sora called transboundary crisis. Because when everything works out as it's supposed to do, well, this works fine. But when a crisis strikes, this increased interconnectedness makes it much easier for the consequences to jump these boundaries. And it can be boundaries of administrative boundaries, but it can also be functional boundaries between different types of systems. And when we're talking about critical infrastructure, we use a term called cascading effect. Basically, this is the domino of critical infrastructures. You know, the domino where you put the tiles in a row and you flip the first one and it goes on the second and it goes on the third and so on. Well, the idea here is similar, that once you get a critical infrastructure affected or 
degraded to some extent, the effect will spread to the next one and to the next. And here's an example. We have heard uh, several examples uh, already. Hurricane Sandy, uh, the European um, blackout. And here's another one, blackout in the US in 2003. This one is one of the 10 worst blackouts ever. Uh, and it started with a tree. A tree coming in contact with the power line that led to a series of events eventually resulting in a lot of people without power for a long time. Of course, you realize that this will create a lot of trouble for other systems, because as everyone knows, we're all dependent on electrical power. But what is most interesting, I think, with this event is actually the investigation report following this. And here's a quote from that. The North American power grid is one large interconnected machine. Now, if you think about it, this is a machine that spans an entire continent. And it doesn't stop there because there are so many other systems heavily dependent on electricity. So you can actually say the machine is much bigger than that. So at this stage, I think it is worth noting that uh, critical infrastructures are not only technical. I think it's important to point out that because you might get that impression from me talking. Um, but, of course, there are sectors in our society where we'll find critical infrastructure where, okay, there are a lot of technical systems, like energy supply, transport. But there are also other sectors where you'll find critical infrastructure that maybe are not so associated with technical systems. Food supply, for example, or others. So, um, moving on, uh, this increased interconnectedness creates challenges for risk management. And in order to understand these challenges, we have to look at the development of risk management, the practice of risk management. It started out in different industries like nuclear, uh, insurance, banking, uh, and others. And I would say that nowadays, risk management is everywhere. Everyone does it. Even Lund University does it. Even my division does it. You do this risk assessment, etc. So it's spread. But this is what I call old risk management. You're heavily focusing on one organization and a limited amount of hazards that might damage that organization. But what is more relevant now, in due to this interconnectedness, is this. Collaboration. We have multiple actors sharing information, collaborating in terms of identifying risk, analyzing it, and potentially also making something about them. And it's not certain that all the wisdom we have from the old regime is usable in this new regime. So we have to be wary. So I will end here uh, by offering some glimpse into current research trying to address these challenges. And the first topic here is um, modeling. Modeling of critical infrastructure in order to identify risks and vulnerabilities within these systems. And here are some examples from colleagues of mine. Here we got two figures showing Sweden. The one on the right is the electrical distribution system. The one on the left is the train distribution system. These are models, usually in a computer, where you can analyze different types of risk and vulnerabilities built into these systems from different perspectives. And here's another one that you probably know, you can't recognize it, but it's actually Scania here. Uh, it's the train system of Scania, and the colored part on the left side, that is sub seven subsystems that are needed in order for the trains to operate in Scania. And what they can do here is look at different combination of events that might damage the function of these systems. Now, this is one type of research ongoing. Another type is more concerned with the fact that we now need to collaborate. The challenge of actually analyzing and communicating risk between different actors, and that is a challenge. And there's a lot of research going on in this area as well. 
and it connects very well to what Sora was mentioning about risk and vulnerability assessment. This is a typical example of where you have direct use of this type of research, how to analyze and how to communicate risk in this diverse setting where you have multiple actors, possibly with different values and, and perspective, like private companies, uh, public agencies, etc. And that's, that's another area of ongoing research uh, with potential for, for interesting results here. So I will go to finalize my talk by going to this question. Is this still a technical problem of analyzing and communicating risk in this context? And by that question, I'm actually going to leave to the next speaker, which is Johan. So. Thank you.